Hey teachers, welcome to the first video in our Zoom for Teachers series. Zoom is a great tool if you are looking to get into flipped classrooms or if you're looking for something for distance learning. Now at first it can feel a little overwhelming, so if you're in that position and you're feeling overwhelmed, I want to encourage you to take a deep breath because I think by the end of this video you're going to feel a lot more confident and you're going to be excited to use Zoom. So today I'm going to show you how to set up your Zoom classroom. Let's get started. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you have a Zoom account. Now typically Zoom limits you to 40 minutes of free video and then after that they charge you, but right now they have a special deal going on where all schools that are closed due to COVID-19 can get a free account. So I'm not sure how long that will be going on if it's still offered next year, but either way you're going to need an account. Once you have your account, you can start creating your first meeting. So let's go ahead and jump on my computer and I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right guys, so you can see that I am already logged into my Zoom account. And when I do that, I'm gonna click on meetings over here in this column. And you'll notice my columns might look a little bit different from yours um, just because I have some additional features that I pay for. But the most important thing is that you click on meetings, which is right here and then you are going to schedule a new meeting. Now, you can name this whatever you want. Um, if it's going to be just a one-time meeting with your class, you can um, give it something specific, like Mrs. Vestal's science class. If it's going to be a reoccurring thing, you might wanna give it a different name, something a little bit more general Mrs. Vestal's class. So let's say I'm gonna set up a reoccurring meeting. So I'm gonna be teaching my students every single day at 10 a.m. So let's go ahead and just call this Mrs. Vestal's class. The description is optional. I usually leave that blank. Now the next thing we wanna put in is when we're gonna meet. So remember I said I'm gonna meet with my class every day at 10 a.m. So we'll start tomorrow, which is April 1st, and I'm going to change it to 10 a.m. And then you can put the duration time in, just so you know, if you put one duration time in and then your meeting goes over that, like let's say you schedule 30 minutes and your kids have a lot of questions and you go 45 minutes, Zoom is not going to cut you off. This is just a general time frame, so that way when it sends out the invite, your students know what to expect. So I'm going to put 30 minutes here, but if I go over that, that's okay. And then this is very important, make sure you have the right time zone checked. I'm in the right time zone, but make sure if you're in a different time zone that you have that checked because the invitation that it sends out to your students is going to be for that time zone. So if you're in the Pacific time zone and you send out for Eastern Standard Time, your students are not gonna show up at the same time as you. Now, if you wanna set this up as a one-time meeting, that's all you have to do. Now, I'm gonna set this up as a reoccurring meeting, something that happens every day. So I'm gonna check this box and it's um, occurring daily and it's occurring one time a day and then here we can put the end date so school for us has already been canceled through the end of the year so I can already schedule these out um, as far as possible to uh, May 21st and leave it at that now you may be thinking what about weekends I'm not getting on on the weekends that's okay this is basically just setting up an invitation that goes to your students but you can just let your students know hey you can click on this on Saturday and Sunday but no one's gonna be there registration I would not require registration um, that's gonna make things really complicated basically your students are gonna have to take a whole additional step and put in their name and email addresses to be able to get the invite in you really don't want to make this more complicated than it needs to be and for that reason I also recommend not adding a password if you check this it will give you this number so basically what that means is you'll have to send the invitation to your students and then your students would have to put in this number um, to be able to access the meeting I just think it makes things too complicated and I want to keep things as simple as possible 
so I recommend not doing this. If you're worried about security, Zoom is, is very secure. The only people that can get into these meetings are the people that you send the link to. So no one else can access, the, it's not like a Facebook group where anybody can join. Um, it, it's much, much more private than other options. Now video, this is allowing, or this is saying who has video features in the meeting. So you definitely want your video on, you want your students to be able to see you, and then if you want to be able to see your students, you can turn that on. If you don't want to be able to see your students, you can turn that off. Audio, I recommend that you leave it for both, it just makes things easier. And then these are your meeting options and there's some important things down here that I want you guys to pay attention to. Um, first of all, enable join before host. Do not check this box. This basically says your students can join the meeting before you and this is kind of like allowing your students into your classroom before you're there and giving them free reign of the place. I don't recommend that. You do want to check mute participants upon entry. Um, one of the most frustrating things with Zoom is that it's very easy to turn the mute off for your participants and then you'll hear talking when you're trying to teach. So one of the easiest ways to prevent um, too many distractions is to just go ahead and mute all of your students when they enter and then you can explain to them um, how they can unmute themselves to talk to you and in the next video I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, whether you enable the waiting room is up to you. Basically what happens with this is when your students click on the invite, it puts them in a waiting room and then you manually have to click on each student's name for them to be able to enter the meeting. Once again, I wouldn't really recommend this just because it's an extra step. It's a little more complicated for you. Um, basically, I would just let students come in as soon as you're there. Only authentic, authenticated users can join. I don't think you need to do that. This one I do recommend that you record. Record the meeting automatically. And basically what this will do is as soon as you end the meeting, it will download a recorded copy to your computer. So then you can email that out to students. So it could be really helpful if students need to go back and watch the information again, if a parent wants to go back and watch the information again, or if you had students that could not attend, um, you can send the video out to them and it's very, very helpful. So I strongly recommend that you do that. Now, alternative hosts, these, these are people that are basically hosting the meeting with you. So let's say that maybe you and your, you, the other teachers on your team, you guys wanna work together to teach a lesson. You can put the other teachers um, email addresses here and then it will send them an email with an invite but their invite will be a little bit different and basically they'll have the same controls as you do when you uh, actually have the meeting so this is something that can be really helpful I have used it before and one area where I find it to be really helpful is I'll be teaching and then my alternative host or the other teacher that person will be monitoring the chat and answering students' questions in the chat. And so we kind of work together to make sure we can get through everything. So this is just really quick how you set up Zoom. This is my preferred way of setting it up and now I'm gonna show you another way to set it up. Now your other option for scheduling your Zoom meetings is to go in through your app. So you could do this on your iPod or if you have the Zoom app installed on your computer, you can just click on that and bring up this menu. And so I'll show you how you can also schedule this way. It doesn't matter which way you do it. My preferred way is the first way that I showed you because there's some extra details that you can put in that way that you can't do this way. But if you choose to schedule through your app, just click schedule. And then you're gonna set up everything very similar to the way that you did before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set everything up exactly as I did before. My meeting's taking place at 10 a.m. starting tomorrow. It's going to be a 30 minute meeting and it's gonna be reoccurring. 
So basically, if you do it this way, it's gonna send you a calendar invitation and then you're gonna have to set up that reoccurrence in your calendar. So this is one reason why I prefer to actually go to the website and set up my meeting is because I can just do all of this at one time. Um, meeting ID generate automatically. Remember, I recommend you do not do a password. Um, we're gonna leave videos on, audio on, and um, calendar options. This is where it's gonna send that invite to, so if you need to do your reoccurring meeting, make sure you pick the right calendar. And then these are the same options that you saw before. Remember, I recommend that you mute participants on entry and that you automatically record your meeting and then you would just click schedule. So those are your two options for setting up your Zoom meeting. As you can see, it's really easy and once you've done it one time, you're gonna be a pro at it. All right, so now you have everything you need to set up your first Zoom meeting so you can teach your first class using Zoom. If you wanna join me in the next video, I'm gonna be showing you some of the tools that you can use once you start your meeting and how you can specifically use those tools for teaching. Now, last, I want to encourage you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. I've got lots of Zoom videos coming out and a lot of other videos about using technology to teach and distance learning activities, and I don't want you to miss out on any of those. So I'll see you next time and happy teaching.